Mr. Torah Wave, everybody. Uh, welcome back to our Genesis class, live from Jerusalem with Rabbi uh, Chaim Goldberg of the Noahide World Center. We so appreciate him uh, uh, sharing uh, the depth of Torah with us. And um, for those of you listening, yeah, this is a half an hour later than our usual. I guess they had a fast in, in Israel, and uh, the rabbi uh, needed a little bit of time. So, of course, we're having these classes at his discretion, and we're just so grateful. So... Um, let's just jump right in and see how the rabbi is doing. Good Shalom, evening. rabbi. You're live on the air. We're going to turn it over to you, sir. And uh, yeah. Good evening, everybody from Jerusalem. Yes, I'm here. Let me try a different camera. Let's see if it's working. The other one. Just a moment. Um, good evening from. Uh, oh, me is working. Can you see me good? Can you see me good? Everything is fine. Yeah, we got you perfect. Five by five, Rabbi. You can see it. You can hear, you hear me good. also good? You can hear me good also? Excellent. I think so, yes. You're in a different room. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting, you know, in my main room. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, yeah, today we had a... First of all, good evening. Good to see you all, all of you. Um, I missed you from last week. It's okay. If we have here, uh, no, 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 she's not here, so I'm not going to speak about this. Um, okay, let's uh, start. We we had a fast. We every year this time of the year we have a fast. Um, this one was the short one, only day fast, one day, and another three weeks we're going to have a long one for 25 hours. Uh, but let's understand what is this one. <laughs> And what is the next one? And this one is um, if we will do, if we will count the days from the day that God gave us the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. Okay? Till today, it was 40 days. Very simple. You can, uh, I can count it in the Hebrew calendar. Okay? We have Sivan. This is the year, the month that God gave us the Ten Commandments, it was six in Sivan, uh, the, the, the sixth day of Sivan. The next day, uh, the, the one after that, the day, uh, the, the month after that is uh, what we call Tammuz. This is us. And we need to get, just to add another 10 days. So 17 of Tammuz, it's 40 days after six of Sivan. What happened there? The Bible is saying it. Um, Moses went up to heaven for 40 days. And on the day that he was supposed to come down, there was a very big crisis. Who remember what the crisis was? There was a very big crisis. The golden calf. Exactly. The golden calf. Exactly. The golden calf. Um, and it happened because they didn't have the patience to wait um, a few hours. Okay, they, they missed him in a few hours, and it was today. Therefore, since then, um, it is very interesting. I will explain in a moment, okay? Um, since then, this is a day of, um, that we are mourning. <clears throat> this is how you say it, right, Dan? We are mourning on uh, this day because of the sin that you did then. Now I'm speaking about almost uh, 3,400 years ago, something like that. We can calculate exactly the dates. <coughs> and uh, since then, we are uh, mourning on this thing. But we also had a long history, a um, few more events, very hard events on this day. Now, we, you need to realize that in the Hebrew tradition, uh, the timing... It's something that, it's like a circle, but it's like, um, how do you call it? Uh, I forgot the name of this uh, thing. A screw, a screw, you know, tiny screw that you can uh, take the screwdriver and turn it around and it's going inside. So it's, it's have um, a tail, okay, that is going upwards. So on one side, you can see, if you're looking on one side, you can see it like, a year after a year after a year. And this period of time of the year, we had very hard things. 
okay, that uh, happened to us. The first one is what I'm saying here now, the golden craft that we had, but also twice along the history, um, the Romes came and managed to, um, to pass the walls of Jerusalem and to destroy the town of Jerusalem on this day. So we're also mourning for that. And I won't go inside to all of the calculation, another three weeks, it's Tisha B'Av, what we call Tisha B'Av. And on Tisha B'Av, it was the day that um, the, the Temple Mount, but something also happened in the desert, in the 40 years of the desert, okay? The spies, exactly, the spies came on Tisha B'Av, or they came the day before Tisha B'Av, and on Tisha B'Av, um, the people cried, they said they want to go back to, um, to Egypt. And since then, those two days uh, are very hard days for us. Now, the main question is what will happen when the temple is going to be built back? Are we going to, um, to mourn for those days? Tisha B'Av for sure not. The question is about uh, this day, this specific day. We have in one of the, uh, one of our sages is saying that always also in the temple, uh, when the temple was built, um, they mourn, they did the, the, in this day, a fast, a day of a fast. But I wanted uh, to, to use, since we don't have a, <clears throat> I had only the time to drink a bit, okay? So it's okay, it's okay. I have, a, I'm, I'm with the strength, it's okay. But I want to, to show something that um, we are reading every time that we're doing a fast. We have five days a year we have a fast. And in three of them, we're reading something, um, one, two, three, four, four. We have six days of fast. And in four of them, we are reading something very important that is related also to all of us here, who are sitting here. And I want to read it for a moment. It's something from the Bible. We read it uh, less than an hour ago in the in the shul, in the prayer that we had. And it's very related also to all of the Noachite people. Therefore, I think it's good to read it for a moment and to understand what it says to us, what, it's, what is the message for us. We already learned that uh, the Bible is God speaking to us in our days today. It's not something abstract, something from the history, something somewhere far away or something like that. It's like... Alive, um, I will say it like that for the English people, for the England people. It's like a live um, game between Liverpool and Manchester. A live game. <laughs> now, <laughs> okay? Okay, no, not, the Torah is much better than that, but it's okay. So let's uh, share the screen for a moment. And, uh, no, not this one, just a moment, just a moment. Here it is. Um, it is something that uh, we also used. So it's going uh, to the prophets and we're going to um, Shia chapter 56. 56, yes. So it starts in 54, it starts in 50, 55, sorry. It starts here, okay? Uh, let's let's start uh, to read, and then I will explain. So let's read first uh, between Verse from six, 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 six to nine. Yes. Seek the Lord when He is found. Call Him when He is near. The wicked shall give up his way, and the man of iniquity his thoughts, and he shall return to the Lord, who shall have mercy upon him and to our God, for He will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Okay, we'll, we'll continue on just a moment. First of all, when is the time that he is found? Are there times that he's more close to us, less close to us? The truth is yes, there are times that he's much closer to us. It's especially in the days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and Sukkot, okay? The days that we have, that we are celebrating in the middle of the year of our year, okay? Our year is starting usually in April somewhere. It's, it's called uh, Nisan. And uh, six months after that, we have this Rosh Hashanah. Those are the days that God is close to us. 
And uh, here the, the prophet is saying to us, listen, there are days that God is more close to you and seek and try to find the way to God in, in those days. And the way to seek to God is, um, the easiest say in the ethics of the fathers that um, the most important thing is not uh, to think about God, but it's to do actions, the deeds, uh, deeds before creeds. This is how you say it, right, in English. So and this is what he is basically saying here. He's saying that if you will, if the wicked should give up his ways, okay, and the man of iniquity with his faults, faults so return to the God, so God will accept him. And we spoke about these the different thoughts that we have about repentance, where the people have difficulties with accepting this idea of repentance, but God, who is as it says here, okay, that his thoughts are much higher than what we can think. He's in a different dimension at all. And he's saying to us, listen, we are, I have a different thoughts than you. Just do repentance and I will help you with this. By the way, this specific verse, I think I need to find it for a moment. It's very important also. Look, look for a moment what is happening, where the Maimonides is saying it, okay? Just a moment. Um, Let me find it in a moment. Uh, I'm on this for that. Um, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, this was fast than what I thought. Um, this is the last chapter of the big book of Maimonides. The Maimonides, his book, phenomenal book. Uh, you can see it here, by the way. Uh, you see, you can see it here. It has a uh, one thousand chapters. This book. And uh, this is the last chapter. This is the last chapter of, uh, of this book. Yes, here it is. And it says here, um, it speaks about a... Uh, about the days of the Messiah, okay? Um, you want me to read? Read the first one, okay? Uh, but but I want to show something else, and I will find it. So in the okay, meanwhile, point, you can read it, okay? Point Just, one, do not presume that in the Messianic age, any facet of the world's nature will change, or there will be innovations in the work of creation. Rather, the world will continue according to its pattern. This is important. Although Isaiah eleven six states, the wolf will dwell with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the young goat. These words are a metaphor and a parable. The interpretation of the prophecy is as follows. Israel will dwell securely together with the wicked Gentiles who are likened to a wolf and a leopard, as in the prophecy of Jeremiah 5, 6. A wolf from the wilderness shall spoil them, and a leopard will stalk their cities. They, shall, they will all return to the true faith and no longer steal or destroy. Rather, they will eat permitted food at peace with Israel, as Isaiah 11 states. The lion will eat straw like an ox. Similarly, other messianic prophecies of this nature are metaphors in the messianic era. Everyone will realize which matters were implied by these metaphors and which allusions they contain. Okay, so we're speaking about the days of the Messiah, but these, the, the halachic, and now he's explaining, this is the last uh, chapter, and he's explaining um, a, lot, a few things about the days of the Messiah. But before that, let's go one chapter before that, and let's learn um, the last halacha of the chapter before that. Now, it's a, it's a long one, and we're not going, we don't need to read everything, okay? But we need to read something, uh, uh, that's all right. Uh, let's read this one, okay? Halachic uh, uh, 4. It's very important. Okay. We, it's it's a long one, but uh, we will read all of it. Okay. okay, yeah, as long as you keep scrolling. If a king will arise from the house of David who diligently contemplates the Torah and observes its mitzvah as prescribed by the written law and the oral law as David, his ancestor, will compel all of Israel to walk in the way of the Torah and rectify the breaches in its observance and fight the wars of God, we may with assurance consider him Mashiach. If he succeeds in the above, builds the temple in its place, and gathers the dispersed of Israel 
He is definitely the Mashiach. He will then improve the entire world, motivating all the nations to serve God together. As Zephaniah 3.9 states, I will transform the peoples to a pure language that they all will call upon the name of God and serve him with one purpose. Read also this paragraph. Yeah. If he did not succeed to this degree or was killed, he is surely is not the redeemer promised by the Torah. Rather, he should be considered as all the other proper and complete kings of the Davidic dynasty who died. God caused him to arise only to test the many, as Daniel 11.35 states, and some of the wise men will stumble and try them to refine and to clarify until the appointed time because the set time is in the future. So until here, what he's saying basically, no, let's remember, this is written down 800 years ago, not today, when we were deep, deep inside the exile, the Hebrew nation, um, part of them in, under the Muslim control and part of them under the um, Christian control. And he's saying here, basically, he's hinting that uh, even if you will say any moment, he's going to say loud and clear about uh, the Muslim and about the Christian. This is why I brought it. But he's uh, trying to, share, to say that there are minimum uh, corner points, requirements, okay, that we need to have, that it will be called the Messiah. And if he got killed or died before that, so he's not the Messiah. He's one of the trying people that try to move the world and other state to this. Until here, everything is fine. By the way, he's also um, reminding uh, Zephania about that everybody is going to speak on the uh, name of God, fair enough. And now he's saying something amazing about Jesus and about the Muslims. Look good because he's quoting the verse that we said a moment ago, Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth, who aspired to be the Mashiach and was executed by the court, was also alluded to in Daniel's prophecies. Uh, 11.14 states, The vulgar among your people shall exalt themselves in an attempt to fulfill the vision, but they shall stumble. Can there be a greater stumbling block than Christianity? All the prophets spoke of Mashiach as the Redeemer of Israel and their Savior, who would gather their dispersed and strengthen their observance of the mitzvot. In contrast, Christianity caused the Jews to be slain by the sword, their remnants to be scattered and humbled, the Torah to be altered, and the majority of the world to err and serve a God other than the Lord. Just a moment, Never just a moment, just a moment, just a moment, just a moment. First of all, I must mention here that um, this uh, yesterday, one of uh, my friends gave me um, an interesting article that was written down 300 years ago by one of our great rabbis, and he proves in a few ways, I won't go inside to this now, he proves this great rabbi that uh, the beginning of the Christianity was people who tried to bring the world the message of the seven laws to become Noachite. But the second generation and the third generation, they moved aside to all of the things that the Maimon is, is saying here. Okay, but at the beginning, they had the purpose of bringing the seven laws to the to the world. But now we look how the Maimonides is hinting and quoting the idea that the thoughts, the pattern of the thoughts of God is different than us. Nevertheless, please. Nevertheless, the intent of the creator of the world is not within the power of man to comprehend for his ways are not our ways, nor are his thoughts our thoughts. Ultimately, this is exactly the the quote that we read a minute ago. Isaiah, in the, yes. You know, in Isaiah. Okay. Okay. All, no, ultimately, all the deeds of Jesus of Nazareth and that Ishmaelite who arose after him will only serve to prepare the way for Mashiach's coming and the improvement of the entire world, motivating the nations to serve God together, as Zephaniah three nine states. I will transform the peoples to a pure language that they will call upon the name of God and serve him with one purpose. Now, we continue, please, with this part also. How will this come about? The entire world has already become filled with the mention of Mashiach, Torah, and Mitzvot. These matters have been spread to the furthermost islands, to many stubborn-hearted nations. They discuss these matters and the Mitzvah of the Torah, saying these Mitzvot were true, but they already negated in the present age and are not applicable for all time. And others, others uh, continue this until the yeah, end. Yes, others, others say implied in the mitzvah are hidden concepts that cannot be understood simply. 
The Mashiach has already come and revealed those hidden truths. When the true Messianic king will arise and prove successful, his position becoming exalted and uplifted, they will all return and realize that their ancestors endowed them with a false heritage and their prophets and ancestors caused them to err. The so, inherited uh, lies. Uh, so we, we today, we're starting to see that. But look how the Maimonides took this, um, um, this, this verse 8, okay? That the thoughts of us and the thoughts of God are different one from each other. And he is taking the false religions that came to this world. And the Maimonides is saying, look for a moment in a different angle about what's happening here. And you will see that it brought the world to another stage. Not the complete stage, not the full stage, not the right stage, everything fine. But it moved it one stage ahead. And then we can come to the next, uh, to the Messiah, to the Messiah age, okay? To, to the era of the Messiah. And this is because we're not thinking in the right way. <laughs> this is what the Mammonid is writing 800 years ago, not today. 800 years ago, he's writing it. And uh, now let's continue for a moment, please, in the thing that we are reading, because there are more things inside here, please. Uh, Verse now, 10. Please, nine, no, from nine. Nine, as uh, the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For just as the rain and the snow fall from the heavens, and it does not return there, unless it has satiated the earth and fruit, fructified it, and furthered its growth, and has given seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall be my word that emanates from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, unless it has done what I desire and has made prosperous the one to whom I sent it. So if God sent to us words, maybe he wrote it down 2,400 years ago. We said it, and people wrote it down 2,400 years ago. But the prophets that we have, until they won't be fulfilled for full of them, God won't stop. Just like when he's sending the rain that will bring to the world the possibility to have fruit and to have a, a seed and wheat, whatever it is, so we can eat on the same level. When he's sending his words, they will come to this world and they will uh, fulfill their mission. And what is the mission? What is the main mission? Please read verse number 12. 12, for with joy shall you go forth, and with peace shall you be brought. The mountains and the hills shall burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap hands. And the meaning of this is that when the Hebrew nation will return back to their homeland, everybody will be with a smile, and everybody will be with the joy. The mountains will be with the joy. Um, also, the, how do you call it? Okay, the mountains, the hills. Um, everything will be with the joy that the Hebrew nation is Burst coming back. Burst into song. Yeah, I love the way the prophet. Okay. Prayed. And now let's continue on. Uh, and more than that, it will be, uh, we can, let, never mind the last uh, verse. Now let's continue on because it's it's stating, stating things that are very important because we're speaking about the day that people are doing the fast. What is the meaning of fast? Fast is taking the body and shrinking it a bit, saying the body is not so important. The soul, the spiritual side is much more important. For one day, we're not eating, we're not drinking, fair enough. So please read verse number one, uh, one till uh, three. So says the Lord, keep justice and practice righteousness, for my salvation is near to come and my benevolence to be revealed. Fortunate is the man who will do this and the person who will hold fast to it, he who keeps the Sabbath from profaning it and guards his hand from doing any evil. Now, let not the foreigner who joined the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people, and let not the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. Now, there are two uh, main two points I want to mention here. First of all, as you can see, he's speaking about doing actions, keep justice, practice righteousness. We're not speaking about becoming, you know, some sort of mind uh, thinking, I have all sorts of ideas. Who is God? What is God? How is God? No, we're asking people to behave in this world in a way that is with justice, with righteousness. This is the way that God is going to reveal himself in this world by us human 
doing the righteous the right things and what are the things that you need to do um, not only things between men and this fellow men but also to keep the Shabbat so to say in actions that you believe in God who created the world and stopped in the seventh day is it speaking only about the Jewish people the answer is no this is why we read number three in number three we can see verse number three that he's speaking about the foreigners now I'm, I'm saying all the time uh, the, to keep the full Shabbat it is very um, hard and I'm not recommending an Ahai to keep a full Shabbat. Is he allowed? He is allowed. I'm not recommending to keep a full Shabbat, to, to stay, to mention, to, to show that you prefer the Shabbat as, as a statement, it's very important. And don't think that as a foreigner, that you're not part of the Hebrew nation, this is why you are a dry tree. You know, God is saying to you, go aside. Please read to number, verse number four and five, what God is promising also to the foreigners. Uh, four, for so says the Lord to the eunuchs who will keep my Sabbaths and will choose what I desire and hold fast to my covenant. I will give them in my house and in my walls a place and a name better than the sons and daughters, an everlasting name I will give him, which will not be discontinued. Well, the meaning of this is that it's it's not a dry tree. It will always continue. And the meaning of this is that uh, every person, and the, we have a say in the Hebrew um, midrash in the Hebrew, you know, uh, sources that uh, regardless if you're a man, if you're a woman, regardless if you're a Jewish or Hebrew person or not Hebrew person, regardless if you're black or white, if you, regardless of whatever it is, it, uh, it's according to your behavior and your actions that God will give His. Um, it's not the word, it's also a prophecy, but it's not the word, the Ruach HaKodesh, but uh, the problem is that to say the Spirit, the Holy Spirit uh, he, he, to, to people who were Christian once, it, it might be in, not in the right, uh, to, mis, misunderstood, it's not in the right position. The meaning of this is that God will guide him, will be part with him, will help him, will go with him, okay? Uh, but, and and it's, not, it's not only for the Jewish people, it's not only for the Hebrew people. It's for those who decide to be to join to join to God to join with God, and this is what it says here, um, six and seven, please. Six, seven, and eight, please read, and then I will. All right, six and the foreigners who join with the Lord to serve Him and to love the name of the Lord to be His servants. Everyone who observes the Sabbath from profaning it and who holds fast to My covenant, I will bring them to My holy mount, and I will cause them to rejoice in My house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be acceptable upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. So says the Lord God, who gathers in the dispersed of Israel, I will yet gather others to him together with his gathered ones. So we have here, not only the Hebrew people will be gathered together to God, also a lot of people will join him and they will be part of the of this place. So they will be part of of. of the kids of God, or they will be part, related with God. All of those things, those are the words. Now, when are we praying this thing? And we're starting it again. The beginning of this uh, of this specific chapter is also to do actions, the right deeds. When are we saying those things? We're saying it a few times a year when we're fasting. And the, word, the meaning of the fasting, why are we acting with the fast? Why are we not eating, we're not drinking for... 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours, 26 hours, never mind, you know, each day with its own uh, unique uh, ideas. This is a day, is a way we saying to ourselves, let's, um, you know, I will say, I will say to you <laughs> a secret. <laughs> I was, uh, when I was in the, in the Israeli army, in the beginning, I was in the tanks, okay? You know that one of the, um, I, I was in the tanks and we we in the most, uh, advanced tanks that we have, but it, it didn't help us. Every morning we were supposed to do, we call this in Hebrew, Teum Kavanot. We're supposed to adjust the rifle that it will be in the right place because at night it's moving a bit. So every morning you need to adjust yourself that the rifle will be connected with the eye of the, you know, of the rifle. Now, usually when you are holding a simple gun, Okay, so you have, um, you're using a very um, simple law of nature, 
that uh, if you're putting two dots, one straight to each other, to one to each other, the rifle will straight ahead will uh, take out the power shoot, you know, the, the, how do you call it, the bullet outside, and it will uh, be on the target. But in the tank, it's a bit more complicated because you're not looking on the rifle itself. You're looking from the side. So you need every morning to adjust yourself so it will be, um, you know, organized together. When you're looking on the, how do you call it, the, the place, the, the target, it will be also the rifle itself will be on the same target that you're looking on. A few times a year, we're doing the same thing. With ourselves. We are not eating, we are remembering, we are doing some sort of repentance if you're in front of God. We're asking or we're looking on this day for the things that were wrong or were not exactly, with all sorts of reasons each time that we're doing it. It's four times a day, a year. It's six times a year, but I won't go inside to all of them exactly each one of them, what is the difference. And uh, what we are reading if we are reading on Yom Kippur, the most highest holy day, we are reading the story about Jonah. What is the story about Jonah? It's not speaking about the Hebrew nation. It speaks that everybody can do repentance, right? So on the, on the middle of the year, we are reading for five times this, those verses. And it's like adjusting from the beginning, what is the aim of the Hebrew nation? The aim of the Hebrew nation is not that the Hebrew people will be in front of God and that's it. No, the aim of the Hebrew nation is that the Hebrew people will come back to their homeland, will behave in the right way to be um, the priest for all of the nations. Let me explain this a bit in a moment. And that we hope that a lot of people will join us to be related with God and that God will be with us inside here in this world and we will be called holy. I will explain this also in another way that we spoke about this a few times already in the past. We see that every day in the beginning of the in the beginning of the of the Bible, every day it has a, a close-up of the day. Okay, we'll remember that. The first day we have God is saying. God is saying, okay, he called the light day and the darkness he called night. And it was evening, it was morning, one day. And the second day, it's something, oh, it's something, okay. And God called the expand heaven and it was evening, it was morning, second day. And we are saying the same thing with the third day. Morning and third day. And the fifth day and the fourth day and the fifth day and the sixth day. There's one day that is not closed. What is the day that is not closed? The seventh day, exactly the seventh day. We don't, we're not closing the seventh day. Why are we not closing the seventh day? Because we're inside the seventh day, okay? God asked us, he, in the seventh day, he did two things. He blessed the seventh day and he hallowed it. What is the meaning of hallowed the seventh day? And that's it. He's not closing the seventh day. When he will close the seventh day, when the, he, the, he, the people, when the people will be hallowed, it will be written down there, and it was a evening. It was a it was more. It was a night. It was morning, okay. And the people got hallowed, and the seventh day. It was seventh day, and then we will continue with the eighth day, okay. This is what's happening here. What what is the meaning of Halloween? What is real the meaning of this? Okay, where God is saying also in Leviticus number nineteen, I am Halloween, and I'm asking you to become the same. What is the meaning of being holy? I will explain this in a way that it will be um, clear for us in an action way, okay? Because the word holy, you won't find it in a, any dictionary as an explanation. It's, it's a unique word that you don't really, nobody really know how to explain it. So let me explain this in a way that it will be clear. Um, there are values, important values, very important values that we have in our world that you can't say that this value is more important than the other one. They're all, they're all very important values, okay? You need to be uh, to behave in a righteous way. You need to be with the mercy on one side. You need to do justice on the other side. You need to be uh, with the kindness on one side. 
but you need also to stand on yourself in the other side. There are a lot, a lot of uh, values that, uh, that are here in this world. Now, the values, I uh, will say it like that, they, there's a, how did the man already said this word? Uh, there's a, let me find the exact word. No, no, it was in the other chapter. He said a um, word that always is uh, running away from me. Um, the metaphor, okay? The metaphor, the, the main word that I can use is a metaphor. Where, for example, um, we're saying that in heaven, um, there is water and fire can live together. In our world, they can't live together. Now it's a metaphor. Fire is someone that is very um, uh, strict and very hard and you know can burn everything. And the water is someone who is very um, with the love, with kindness, is very smoothly like the, uh, the water is a metaphor. Up in heaven, they can live together. Here in this world, it's very hard for those to, to, to live together. The word holiness or hallowed is to have all those, I will call it values that they can live together in one place, in one nation. How to use it and how to gamble between the values? For this, we have the time. Angels don't have the time. Why do we have the time? Another very big question that all of the people of the world, all the philosophers of the world are asking themselves, why do we need to have time? What is the meaning of time? There are all sorts of ideas how to explain time, but nobody understands why to have time. Why do we need to have this thing of the continuous of the time? Now, when you understand that we are already, uh, I will say, exist in this world, we are completely, complete, we are completeness, you know, fully in this world. So you don't understand why do you need to time. But if you understand in a different way, like the Hebrew nation realized that when you came to this world, you got life, you got life without any, I will say, payment for that. God gave you life. That's it. Now, it is very uncomfortable to get a, a present without paying for back, without getting, um, I will say, giving something worthly back. It's very hard for us as people. This is how we built up. This is how it's built up inside us. So the time is where each one and one of us have the opportunity to give back to the world. Yeah. My mission is not your mission, Dan. It's not your mission, Bart. It's not your mission. You know, everybody have a different mission here. Maybe we have some missions that are more or less together. The mission of the Hebrew nation is to build a society. The Eschale Goy Gadol really built you up as a big nation to build a society that can put all the values together and to use the time to play with the values. Here, this value is more important. Here, this value is more important, okay? The biggest debate that we have today in the United States about um, pregnancy, stopping pregnancy, doing abortion, all those things, it's a debate about values. What value is more important? Now, with the timing, you can use or you can put the values each one of them in the right place in the right time. The holy word is to build up a society, not a person that is a holy word, okay? To build up a society that can live right with all of the values. For example, I'll give you a small example. I think that we saw this more than once here. Um, unfortunately, the Hebrew nation is supposed to fight for their life here in this, world, in this uh, area, okay? In Gaza, they're all the time bombing us, throwing missiles and things like that. Also from Lebanon, throwing missiles. And also the Iran people, okay, are, try, are frightening us that they will uh, throw on us a nuclear bomb. Fair enough. So we need to fight. But when we are fighting, today we know that from all over the world, people from uh, armies from all over the world are coming to learn how we're doing this in the most, uh, I will say, a... Uh, right way from one side to fight in the most hardest way that you can fight, and the other side to try not to kill civilians and people who are not part of this fight, but the Hamas and others are trying to take them as a shield. 
a live shield. Now, the, the, how do you play with those two values? It's hard, okay? Go to the United States in Afghanistan for each um, terrorist that they killed, they killed also four civilian people. We are in a different uh, numbers, okay? For, e for every five uh, people that we killed that are terror people, only one, also civilian people that we killed. Unfortunately, we didn't want to. But how do you play with the values? So the Hollywood that God is speaking about is to build up a society that can play with the values in the right way, placing it in the timing in the right places, whatever it is. By the way, it's, it's, it's uh, unreasonable what's happening, okay? From Gaza, it's in good what I'm going to say now because you think about this, it's, I think that it's a bit crazy. It's a bit too much, I would say it like that. We get it, I'm, I'm saying it carefully, but we got it, unfortunately, from the Christian world, okay? From Gaza, every um, week, there are people who are coming out from Gaza to Beersheba, to Israel, to get um, in the hospital in Beersheba, to get a, a treatment, to get healed from all sorts of illnesses that they can't give them in Gaza. Now we have in Gaza four people who are captured, not soldiers, civilian people who are captured there, and they are in a bad condition of a health condition, and they're not, and they're not giving any way for us to help them. Now, if you're asking me, I think that if I was the, you know, the, the prime minister of Israel, I would say, fair enough, don't take anyone outside anymore from Gaza until they're not bringing us the four civil, civil people that will help them, you know, physically. But there is something here that we are playing with the values. Maybe we're not doing it 100% correctly yet. Okay, fair enough. But we are playing with the values. This is the hollow that God is speaking about, to build up a society that will also show to the world. This is also what we did with the Brit Shalom book. We gave the values in the right measurement that God is giving us to teach people how to live in the right values in a personal level, not only to build up society. And this is exactly what we're speaking in the thing of Ishaya. It's not only us. The main thing is to bring the world to the stage of Alouette so we can close this day and we can continue us to, to the next day to the days of the Messiah as we as uh, we saw in the Maimonides, okay? So the next level of the, of the world, where we are getting close to God and God is going among us, okay? If we can say something like that, because God doesn't have any, anybody. He's not, a, he's not with a body <laughs> like that. So those are the, uh, this is the, the, the words. This is what we are learning. This is what we are reading a few times a year to adjust the aim that we have in our life, it's not only the Hebrew nation. We want to do repentance for ourselves. We want to come back to the home, to our homeland, to build up the society. We want to have more people that will join us and to spread this word to the world, to bring the world to the next stage that God will be connected with this world. I read this today. The truth is I, I organized something else from Genesis. But when we read it, you know, an hour and a half ago in the in the davening, in the prayer that we had, I said, I must say a few words about this because we never really read it. If you will go um, to the main part where people are doing the self-declaration, uh, you will see that we're using those words, those uh, sentences, this prophecy we're using to say to people, look, you're not a foreigner. The only thing that you need to do is to accept on yourself to get under the... Um, I will say the sages of the Hebrew nation were preserving the words of God. And this way you will get close to God and you will be part of this big community of the Brit Olam. The word Brit Olam in English is a covenant of peace. Brit Olam, okay? A covenant of the world where God said also to Noah, I'm going to do with you a covenant. And the Brit Olam community, come be part of the Brit Olam community. It's not us. It's for all of the world. I think I spoke enough for tonight. If you have questions, this is the time. I hope I was clear enough with everything that I said.
Because the seventh day was not completed, uh, it's still being hollowed at the moment, and that's the state we're in right now. And, um, yeah, that's the whole part and purpose uh, we all get to play in this world, and uh, I think it, it uh, is uh, an excellent opportunity if you can find uh, any way to make the world a better place and uh, work towards uh, hollowing it or, or, or making it hallowed. Um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Fair enough. Okay. Um, I have another few minutes. I will say, you know, I have something to say, but it's a, uh, people ask me about, uh, let me say another way, one word. Again, it's to see, to look about, uh, I will say, values and to understand the differences. I will give an example. Okay. I got a question, uh, something like, uh, it was maybe 15 minutes before eight o'clock, uh, you know, something like uh, an hour and a half ago. Uh, about someone uh, that has, she is a Noahite and her son is going to get married with a, a Catholic uh, girl and they're going to get married in the church. And she asked me as a Noahite, am I allowed to be there? I'm not allowed to be there. What exactly I need to do, how to do, whatever to do. Now, again, let's look on this in the right eyes, okay, in the right glasses. It's a question of, of, of uh, values. On one side, I have the value of the family, the connection, my son, the other family that is going to get connected with me, okay? My daughter-in-law that is going to get married with my son. And this is important for them. We know that it's idolatry. This is the other value. I don't believe in this idolatry. I don't want to go inside to the church on the side of the idolatry. So the question is, what is the more important value? How to behave exactly in this situation. And I want to say, and I will say this again and again until it will be clear and people won't ask me anymore about this question, but I don't care. You can ask it again and again, it's okay. Um, there is the three, the first three or four chapters of the Bible. There is a reason why I'm not saying, okay, it's basically the, five, the first five one, but it's okay. The first chapters of the Bible is speaking about the relationship that men have with God. God said to him, don't eat from, eat from this tree, eat from this tree, and whatever. And men and the woman, they failed. Fair enough. So then God kicked them out from Eden. And from there on till today, the main value, I'll call it like that, that we are being judged on is the relationship between men and his fellow men. And especially in his family. We see this with Cain and Abel. And then we will see this again with Abraham and Lot. And we will see this again, Isaac and Ishmael, who wants to kill one each other. Ishmael wants to kill Isaac. And we will see this again with Esau and Jacob, where Esau wants to kill Jacob. And we'll see this, uh, this again with uh, uh, Judah and uh, Joseph, okay, where Judah wants to kill. The main judgment is between men and this fellow man, especially in the family. So when we have those values, idolatry, men and God, and behavior between men and his fellow men, what is the most important value today? Men and his fellow men. Especially if you go to the church, not because you believe in, in Jesus or whatever it is. You're not going to bow in front of Jesus to say, oh, he's my God. No, but you're going to the church because you want to be part of the family. It's also an opportunity. You can go to the church and, by the way, to put all sorts of, you know, flyers or so, small thing that is um, uh, with, with a, I will say, with a barcode that you can send them to the, to the uh, Bridge Alone book, okay? What exactly is a relationship, whatever it is. But when you have those two values, adjust it in the right way. Go to the, to this uh, ceremony. If the ceremony is being held up as a something that is idolatry and you must be part of the idolatry, you can say, please, um, you know, also uh, respect me. And, and this part, I don't want to be part of because I'm not part of the idolatry. But usually the ceremony is not part of the idolatry, right? They're just doing it in this place. They maybe even believe in Jesus, fair enough, but you're not part of this. But you do, you are part of the family and it's very important. 
to be part of the family. You know, we can't become a fanat people that losing, um, you know, the connections. If someone is becoming a Jewish person and doing conversion, so I understand that he's leaving his family and that's it. We don't think that you need to do conversion. I think that to become an Orchite, it's much bigger mission than to become a Jewish person. I think it was clear enough. Again, it is an example of a whole way of behavior in our days. I hope I was clear enough also with this. <laughs> Fair enough. You are all quiet today. Fair enough. It's, okay. it's fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, Hi, hello. You woke up. <laughs> yeah, right. yes. If somebody in your family is toxic, it's, uh, it's insulting, aggressive, violent, can you, you know, stay away from them? Or do you have to try and try and bend, uh, bend yourself over? I don't think I, I don't believe I, I, I don't <clears throat> it's a different question. I don't think you need to bend yourself. Don't speak, let's speak not about uh, beliefs, okay? Speak about something else. If someone is uh, in, in your family is uh, treating you in a in a bad way because uh, he doesn't like you, okay, or he wants to because of your work or something like that. So you're not supposed to be all the time connected with him, you know, and to say to him, okay. I'm I'm a I'm the mug on the floor and you can step on me. I'm not asking you to behave like that. So it's not related to a, to, to a question of beliefs. It's related to a question of behavior between one and each other. And if he doesn't know how to behave with you, so you're not saying you're not supposed to say to yourself, okay, I will be nothing and he can uh, jump on me. No. So say to him, listen, until you won't be able to respect me like I'm respecting you, I don't want to have too much connection with you. So I will have the minimum connection that I can do. It's not related to, to uh, beliefs. It's related to behavior of person. This is something else, again, with the values, because you're not, you're not, if you remember, we spoke about this when we spoke about Abel. Abel was stronger than Cain. Remember that? Abel was stronger than Cain. And Abel was on top of Cain. And Cain asked him, what will you say to Adam and Eve, our father and mother, if you will kill me? And Abel thought that Cain is in the same level of values that he is. Therefore, if he won't kill him, also Cain won't kill him back. So he went out from him. He moved from him. And then Cain stood up. This is what's written down. He stood up for where he stood up. And he killed Abel. And this was his mistake. He paid for his life for that mistake. Okay, why? Because with all the respect, if he is not at the level, okay, of understanding that you, I will say it like that, listen good to what I'm going to say. You are uh, being uh, created in the image of God. And also the other one who is behaving not good with you was created in the image of God. You know how to respect it. If he doesn't know how to respect it, you don't need to be connected with him too much. You can tell them until you don't understand that both of us are being related or being created in the image of God. So with all of the respect, I don't want to have connection with you. I'm not your mug on the floor that you will all the time uh, put your feet on me and I will say, okay, okay, you know. The, the, uh, the understanding, uh, the Hebrew nation doesn't believe in the, in the words that if you give giving smack in one side, give the other side getting smack in one side, give a punch in the other side. <laughs> okay. Yes, now. Okay, I, I have one comment regarding to uh, what you just said. Um, I learned from the Israelite people that you don't negotiate with terrorists. Right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay, Italo, it's on the same level. It's on the same level. If he's behaving as a terrorist, say to him, thank you very much. I'm not negotiating with you. <laughs> yeah, and also, um, Italo, Italo, just so you know, I have the same situation in my family. Um, I try to avoid. They come to me with their own theories. And when I try to explain, they become all violent. But so I don't deal with them, you know. But um, the question I want to ask, um, Rabbi, 
the part, this is just so that I know how to explain if somebody asks me, because in my mind, it's not completely in the right place. Um, when you said um, in, in the Genesis where it says God hallowed it, the way you explained it. So this is how I am understanding it. On that day, everything that he was creating, because there was a lot of physical and chemical biological things were happening. A lot of creation was taking place. So on the seventh day, he completely stopped it. All the physicality, the creation part of it stopped and it was all spiritual. Something uh, like that, uh, uh, not uh, quite uh, understanding it. No, I, I will say to you something. I I think uh, in the last uh, three or four weeks, I looked inside again to all of the study that we did in the first few chapters. And I decided for myself to organize a, a course that will explain it with another level that we didn't sit. I don't know if uh, I thought that I will manage today <laughs> to, to put this course uh, you know, on the internet. Uh, the first people that are going to see this course and to, to adjust me or say it like that, to say if something is missing, something ah, is going to be all of you. So uh, give, give me another, I hope in the next coming month, you will see this and I will explain everything again. The first chapters in the Bible are not, are not in the dimension that we know today. Okay? It's not here. We need to realize that. It's not in the dimension that we know today. When someone got forbidden is dying, what are we saying? That he went to heaven, right? This is what we're saying. He went to heaven, but his body is here, right? So he went to heaven. <laughs> Those are the first chapters of the Bible. We're speaking about something that we don't, we don't know here. No one, no one came back from heaven to say to us what's happening there. So we need to understand how uh, the man of said, it's a metaphor. We need to understand what exactly the metaphor that he's speaking about this other dimension teaching us in our world. One of the things I said today about uh, the values and how to bring them in this world to a way that you can adjust it and leave, it, leave all of them in the right way, each one of them in the right place, in the right time. It's one of the things that I said today, but there is a lot of things that we can say more and Hopefully, I'm going to organize this as a course in the short uh, things. Um, and then I will send to all of you, and then we'll publish it. Okay? Thank you so yeah. much. Thank Fair you. Enough. Um, I think it's enough for tonight. I need to eat something. <laughs> uh, see, see you all next week. Uh, hopefully next week at time, everything will be at time. There is no fast or something like that. So with that uh, help. Well, thank you so much, Rabbi. Beautiful, beautiful message today. It really uh, was uh, quite useful. Now, folks, I am intending to be on in about uh, two and a half hours with Rabbi Karma Ingber for some Q&A. If anybody's got some questions they want to ask the rabbi, you're welcome to attend that. Uh, we'll be uh, posting that live on YouTube and uh, Facebook as well. So, uh, well, thank you so much, Rabbi, and uh, we'll sign out for today. And uh, we aim to be back next week, uh, is what the rabbi's saying. Look for the posts, and uh, we hope to see you all there and wish you all a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye for now. Great week, everybody. Great week. Wonderful week. With yes. a lot of That's a Torah wave. Thank you, Rabbi. There are a few England people here, right? Angela and Mike, Lloyd, Collins. Yeah, Collins, yeah. <laughs> They're also in England. Yeah, you're all yeah, together. Yes. You know one each other, yes? Yeah.